Hey world, welcome to the Sharice Nicole podcast. I created this space where I'll discuss life lessons, personal stories, observations, unsolicited advice, and ramblings that go on in my chattering mind. Every so often, I will pull in guests to provide different perspectives and discuss a range of topics from nutrition to travel and all things in between. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back, guys, to my channel. Not my channel. Welcome back to my podcast. (laughs) That's what happens when you have like how many different platforms out there i get it mixed up sometimes but welcome back to the sharice nicole podcast thank you guys for tuning in season two is amongst us and i'm so excited anyways if you didn't know i turned 30 this year (laughs) whoa 30 years old okay when i was like 18 19 20 21 22 i wasn't thinking about 30 year old sharice so to now be 30 it's surreal because I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's great to be here. I'm so blessed. Um, just the way that I rang in my birthday this year, full of gratitude. Not like I, I'm short of gratitude on my birthday, but like very full of gratitude, especially this year because of clearly the events of this year and the fact that life has changed forever as we know it to be around family and friends and you know, just to have everything intact so far um, up until this point in life, you know, I'm just grateful for. It. And I look back and it makes me reflect on just life in general and just how much growth I've had. And I really wanted and I really thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make an episode where I'm just sharing 30 life lessons that I learned in my 20s, but it's going to be a reflection for my 30th birthday. So I'm going to share with you 30 life lessons that I learned and just kind of go through them all one by one. And a lot of these lessons I'm still learning, right? Like I I haven't perfected them. There's just insights and awareness and experiences that I've gone through that I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a thing. (laughs) And this is what I'm going to take with me into my life moving forward. Everything happened as it was meant to happen at the right time it was meant to happen and so I'm just grateful for all the experiences that I've lived throughout and everything that's ever happened in my life but to start it off um and I think this is top of mind and this is in no particular order or list of like what's a biggest lesson versus what's not a big lesson these are all pretty big to me but I just kind of jotted all of them down as they came to mind so Number one life lesson that I learned throughout my life and mostly through my 20s is self-compassion. So I'm actually going to drop a blog post on self-compassion, what that means to me. To me, anyways, it was a new term that I just learned about. I was reading a Medium article about developing self-compassion and Renalyn and I had a had a podcast episode about, you know, self-compassion as well. But I honestly only heard that term up like maybe like three years ago. And I was like, self? compassion like you can you can do that for yourself so I read into it I learned about it and I realized that I never I never applied compassion when it came to myself and throughout my life I never really gave myself that sort of support and emotional support that I would give outwards that I would give to others I never considered that oh wait this can be something that I give to myself so self-compassion has been a great life lesson that I've learned Um, it's been something that I now instill into my life daily it could be as small as you know if I'm working out and I can't and I can't handle like all of the the exercises then I'll just be like all right cool it's not my day today but I'll come back tomorrow you know what I mean like self-compassion is just like being about being gentle with yourself and not being so hard on yourself and just, you know, knowing that it's okay. Number two, and I did a whole episode um, based off of this, but people project insecurities. So as you know from episode, I believe it was three, which is dream killers. It was all about that. It was all about just going through experiences where people would project their insecurities onto me and it would come off as they were hating or criticizing or whatever. A lot of people regret what they haven't been able to attain in this lifetime or, you know, they project a lot of their fears and insecurities and doubts onto you. And it's not necessarily because they don't think that you can do it, but most of the time it's because they don't think they can do it. 
And then in some sort of way, they're kind of projecting it onto you. And it's really not your job to take that on. When It's interesting when you can think about it from a place of, oh, okay, they're telling me this, but it's most likely because they don't see it for themselves. And I'm telling you, that takes a lot off of you. There was um, an incident earlier this year where someone who is very insecure was throwing a lot at me, saying things to me, about me, anger, all of that. And I just had to realize that And in the moment, I didn't realize it, but I had to realize afterwards that I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this person's really insecure. And this is how probably she feels about herself. And then I'm getting the blowback from it, right? So I just learned how to not really take things too personally when people get upset. I'm still human though. And it happens if people, you know, tell me things. I do get hurt still. It happens. I'm human, but it's different. It's a different ballgame when you know that, you know people project whatever onto you. Number three is trusting my gut instincts and my own energy. Now, like I'm a very spiritual person. I wasn't always like this, but I'd say towards my late 20s, I started to tap into my consciousness, my third eye chakra, all of that good stuff. And I really started to use my instincts for what it's for, which is to to give me advice, to give me guidance where my mind can't comprehend or logically make sense of it. So it's um, good enough to the point where it's like where I'm in certain rooms, I can read the energy. If I'm talking to someone and, you know, I don't really, I'm a little iffy about them. I don't really know them that well. It's, it's like something that I can't make sense of logically with my prefrontal cortex but that my energy my gut feeling can so i've really learned how to tap into my gut instincts now mind you your gut instincts might be off okay you got to eat well not a lot of sugar not a lot of starch not a lot of bread a lot of not a lot of flowers so make sure you know you're eating well and then you can tap into your your gut instincts but it's there for a reason it's there to protect you and just i i'm i lean into energy for everything I think I've met a lot of really dope people and it's because I trusted their energy. They have good energy. They make me feel good. So something makes me want to gravitate towards them. And I trust that 100% all the time. Number four, eat well to live well. Now, if this didn't make sense before, it definitely makes sense now. I think the reason why I eat the way I do, which is mostly a whole whole food plant-based diet, which just means I eat a lot from like the vegetable category and the fruits category and the fats category, like very whole foods, like for example, broccoli, salmon, and like salad and avocado could be a meal that I eat. I eat that way so that I feel good. I eat that way so that I focus. I eat that way so that I don't feel tired and slumped over and want to sleep for the whole day. Because when I eat certain other foods that are bad for me, deeply fried foods and everything like that, they make me feel like shit and I can't get anything done and I can't and I can't be productive running off of cheap fuel you know what I mean so eat well to live well really holds a lot of weight in my life and now more than ever obviously as I'm aging I want to make sure that I'm feeding my body with all the nutritious right foods that will keep me going and keep me sharp and elevated not only spiritually, but emotionally, energetically. Yeah, you got to eat better for your body and for your health. I mean, half the time, you know, I do these challenges, these detoxes, these fasting challenges. It's not because I am i don't like food or I like to discipline myself. No, it's because of the greater good. It's because of what's going to come out of it. And that's not always going to be something that is savory, something that tastes good, (laughs) something that has sugar in it. And you just got to learn really how to do what's best for you. Number five, get enough sleep. (laughs) Get enough sleep. I've never been someone that is um, a night owl, an insomniac. Thank you, Lord. There's this one instance where I I wasn't able to sleep. I had caffeine. Those were the university days. I was trying to um, write a paper that I left last minute. (laughs) the thing to do in university. I was trying to write a paper last minute and I drank coffee thinking that that was going to give me enough energy, enough drive to like focus on this paper that I had to write. And um, it didn't do that. I ended up writing the same sentence five times. And then I was like, all right, forget it. This isn't happening tonight. I went to sleep and I couldn't fall asleep. And it was because of the caffeine. 
it was the worst feeling I've ever had to not be able to fall asleep and be so wired. Yeah. So never again, I don't drink coffee because of that reason. I just, I'm not a coffee person anyways, but get enough sleep has been important. And when I don't sleep enough, I'm cranky and a cranky Sharice is not a really nice Sharice. I value my sleep. I think that you need to sleep in order to just re-energize, to collect your thoughts, to make sense of your thoughts, to solve problems in your mind, to be more creative, to manifest your dreams. All of that happens during your sleep. It's very important to sleep, get your sleep in. I don't think it's cool to be like, oh, I don't sleep. I'll grind no day. I'll grind all day. No sleep. Okay, great. Yeah. Anyways, I'll, you can find me in the bed getting sleep. So anyways, number six, move your body. Okay. Like we did this when we were kids. We, we would, you know, bike, we would run, play tag, skip rope, all of that stuff. There was so much activity I did, so much cardio I did in my childhood. And then, you know, when you got to teenage years, um, unless you were in sports, which I wasn't, unfortunately, that kind of took a, a hit. And then in my adulthood, I kind of had to kind of, I had to make sense of like movement and activity and working out. Um, but I'd say within the past two years, I've developed a really good fitness regimen where I enjoyed it. I enjoyed lifting weights. I enjoyed cardio. I enjoyed running on a treadmill um, because of the endorphins, because of how I felt. I felt better after my workouts. I realized that going to the gym was good for my my soul, my my psyche, my mental. Like I, I let's say I'd go to the gym feeling a little off, and I'd leave the gym feeling great, feeling calm, feeling I don't know something was fulfilled within me. I don't know. So yeah, going and working out, I'd say, has been recently to me, it's been more of um, a psychological thing. You know, it it makes me feel better. So not really just like a a means to get a better body or whatever. It's it's more for my, what it does for me mentally. And just there's some mornings where I wake up and um, if I don't get my stretch in or whatever I choose to do for the day, like I feel off and I can't really explain it, but so yeah, move your body. That's so important. It's as important now as it ever will be in your life. And especially as I get older, like you need to continue moving. You have body, you have limbs, you have this and that for a reason. Use it. (laughs) Number seven, identifying a self-care regime, regime, regimen, routine, all of that. It's been really important to me to have something that I can lean in for myself that helps me recharge my own batteries. So for me, my self-care routine is, you know, eating well, sleeping well, exercising, journaling, so many things, right? And it's just something that I can tap into for myself that makes me feel whole. I find that when I'm just going, 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 and I'm not taking time to relax and do something for myself that's going to better myself, that it's just going to mean that a train wrecks ahead. So identifying a self-care routine is super important, especially now and as I grow older, because you get to know yourself a lot better and you get to know what you like and you enjoy. And you need to kind of keep up those habits as as you get older. It's just so important. So yeah, I, I don't think I've had, I had a self-care routine when I was 20. So it's really cool to um, now be 30 and and have it in mind, like, and, and just know exactly what I need whenever I need to recharge. Number eight, it's okay to say no. And I still honestly have trouble saying no. I mean, I don't think I say no flat out. <laughs> I say no in other ways. I'll be like, um, I will see if I can get around to that sometime. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just easier to be like, no. I think give me two more years, I'll be okay with saying no. <laughs> but it's okay to say no. It's okay to not be able to commit. It's okay to not want to go somewhere with someone. It's okay to not agree with someone. It's okay to, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to say no. It's okay. People that get mad or upset at you just are people that never had a difference of opinion told to them before. And it's weird that, you know, people will get mad at you saying no anyways, but it's your life. Live it how you want. And it's okay to say no. Number nine, not everyone is going to like you. Okay, when I was in my early 20s, I'd say high school, early 20s, I was always, I wasn't like someone who knew everyone and had like friendships with everyone. No, I was kind of like the girl that was just in the cut and pretty shy, pretty low key. 
Um, but I didn't think I was disliked. But there were still some people who would pick me out of a crowd and be like, I don't like that girl. Maybe they only had one conversation with me, one interaction with me where I was quiet into myself that they misconstrued as being, you know, a bougie black girl, which is all on them, not me. I don't care. But based off of that one interaction, they'd be like, no, I don't like her. And then I remember people would be so mean to me for like literally no reason. It could be something that they heard from someone or again, like I said, just an interaction with me that was off that they kind of were like, yeah, no, she ain't it. (laughs) And they'd be so, and they just have a chip on their shoulder and I just wouldn't understand it. And anyways, when I was in my early twenties, I used to, that used to bother me so much because I was like, what? I'm an amazing person. Like, how do you not like me? Nah. Nowadays, you don't like me? great keep it moving I really don't care because in my life now I see it as the story that you want to make up of me in your head has nothing to do with me that's cool and you know I have people in my life that do like me and do take the time to get to know me truthfully and you know so I mean I lean into that I focus on them I don't really care about who else doesn't know me that doesn't like me I really don't care which leads me into lesson number 10. It's not your job to convince people to like you. So those people that have whatever idea of the of me in their head as they do, that's their problem. That's a you problem. <laughs> it's not my problem or it's not my job to kind of go out of my way and convince you otherwise. And again, early 20s, I used to feel like that. I used to be like, what? What do you mean? Like, oh my gosh. Like, And then I used to be like extra nice to compensate. But I don't care. I don't know. That's sad energy. I really don't care. Your loss. <laughs> Number 11, flowing, not forcing. That's one of my mantras of life. Flowing, not forcing like a river. I think in life I used to, and I still kind of do it today, but in a lot of my 20s, I used to try to force things. I used to try to control things. I used to try to like have an, a, a good idea and handle of what was happening, when it was happening, where it was happening. That's a lot of resistance. That's a lot of forcing. I can't force. I can't control everything about life i can control how i react to things right which kind of taps into the flowing aspect of life i can be a little bit more open a little bit more flexible so just flowing not forcing in so many areas of life can really save you from stress can states can save you from a lot of things that are out of your control so flowing not forcing (laughs) Number 12, you are your biggest obstacle. So accountability, reflection, and self-sabotage, which is honestly its own episode. But I had to learn in this precious life that sometimes I was the one that got in my own way. I'm my biggest obstacle. I am my biggest everything. You know what I mean? So if I can get past me and my thoughts and my self-sabotage, then oh my gosh, look at all the things that I can get done. So sometimes it it takes, you know, that reflection to just actually ask yourself those hard questions and realize that maybe you're the problem. Maybe I am the problem. Maybe maybe it's not what happens to me. Maybe it's about what I'm doing. Maybe it's about what I'm entertaining. So yeah, that's a hard one to swallow, but definitely important. Number 13, drink more water. Gosh, there's some times where I'm like, I have a headache or, you know, I'm constipated or I'm just like not as bubbly as I can be. Maybe it's because I'm dehydrated. Drink more water. Honestly, I should be getting 2.5 liters, almost three liters a day. Do I hit that? No, not all the time, but you know what can solve that? If I drink more water. <laughs> Number 14, do what makes you feel happy and good. And this is something I learned or had to learn um, in the past, maybe like two, three years, because I find that I do things for other people. I kind of sacrifice myself to make others feel good or do what I think they want me to do, but not what I want to do at the end of the day. I think doing or having this podcast, this makes me feel good. I feel happy doing it. So I'm gonna keep doing it. (laughs) And, and that just goes with anything in life. You know, if there's something that you don't want to do, you have to tell someone you really don't want to do it because you ain't with it. It's not aligned with your purpose or whatever you like to do. So do what makes you happy and put more energy into what makes you feel good. That's so important. Number 15, gratitude. <laughs> Being grateful for life's blessings, what I have what I experience, what I get to enjoy, what I get to do has just opened up a world of abundance to me. It's just put me in high vibrations, good spirits. And on my worst days, I have to find what I'm grateful for. It's 
imperative that I do that. You have to find the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm not saying that nothing else exists or you can't ever go through the motions. Definitely do, but don't forget what you're grateful for. And every time that I sit and I and I think about all the things that I love, all the things that I'm I'm happy and blessed about, it's like, what do I have to complain about? What do I really have to complain about when I think about all that I have? So yeah, gratitude has been a game changer. Number 16, make mistakes, fail, do wrong things because it's only going to lead you to what's right, what's good and lessons that you can learn and take with you for the rest of your life. So I used to be afraid of making mistakes and sometimes I kind of am still. Um, Failure is not fun, but it teaches you a lot and that's the only way you can get better. You can't get worse than worse. You can't go lower than rock bottom. There's only up from there. You only you can only take with you the lessons and apply them. I mean, one thing you can keep doing is keep making mistakes, but eventually you're going to have to keep learning from them and then apply them moving forward in order, or in order to get better and grow. That's what this life is about. You have to, sometimes it's going to happen. You got to be open to it because that's just life. Nobody's perfect. Number 17, keep good people and energy and good energy around you. So stay in high vibrations. And so this is kind of in tie, this is kind of in relation to like me being so spiritual now. Um, I learned about vibrations and I learned about energy and I learned about like how everything is energy. And I learned how to tap into my own energy, how my feeling after a certain conversation, how my feeling after something I watch, how my feeling in general. And I'll know when I'm in high vibrations, when I'm low vibrations. Sometimes it's even as uh, noticeable as, you know, if I'm talking to someone after that conversation, do I leave feeling better or do I leave feeling zapped of energy or, you know what I mean? And there have been conversations with people where I I left feeling drained and I'm like, ooh, I don't like that feeling. So it's about really learning what is taking energy away from you and finding the things that fulfill you and make you feel better in high vibration. So that might mean filtering what you listen to, watch and read and and leaning in more into what makes you feel good. So that's definitely been something that I've been working at a lot. Um, not only this past year, but just in general, that's something that I've come to learn is so important. Number 18, feel your emotions. It's okay to go through the motions like I said earlier you know make mistakes and everything but you know when you feel low feel low if you feel sad feel sad experience it process it go through it do what you need to do when you're in it don't stay there of course but experience them right because it's all it's all about it's all a part of life think about it if we lived life and we never felt sadness regret pain or anger we would be so boring (laughs) we'd be so like we'd be robots you, sometimes the bad has to happen in order for you to appreciate the good. And honestly, sometimes the bad is a part of just life in general. You just have to. It's motions, right? I like to think of the sun coming up every morning as a reminder that nothing is permanent. Life goes on. Nature goes on. Things go on. So whatever experience you're going through right now and you think that that's it for you, don't worry because it will pass and the sun will come up again and life will go on. And it's okay. So it's okay. Your emotions are not stagnant unless you want them to be. (laughs) For the most part, they are emotion and they're working their way through you. But knowing how to make sense of your emotions and how to process them, that's the important part. Okay, 19, you're deserving, meaning me, I'm deserving. (laughs) So I'm deserving. There's a lot of things in life that... um, subconsciously I feel like I don't I shouldn't get I'm not deserving of but where did that where did that thought process come from where did that come from who told me that you know is it conditioning is it what I've heard from my family like you know what I mean like where did I you know so when I meditate and when I tap in to my inner conscious and like just my spirit my abundance it's like no you are deserving of all things and so when things happen in my life I have to catch myself and be open and accepting of it and just know that I am deserving, period. Number 20, get out of your comfort zone. So this has happened several times throughout my life and it's never been fun. Um, 
But, you know, I know that growth is at the end of my comfort zone. I think I learned early on in my 20s that I was like, I cannot. For example, I had a job in a call center and I knew that that was not it for me. I knew that that was not it for me. And I remember really wanting to work at American Apparel, which is a retail store. I really wanted to work there, probably because I wanted to wear their clothes. But anyways, I remember going to the interview twice or three times. It was like an open call. And uh, I didn't get it the first time. I went again the second time. And then I got the job. And mind you, that was like going to be my ticket to like, just public interaction and speaking to strangers because before that I had only worked in a call center seeing the same people every day all day and then before that was just school seeing the same people all day every day this was going to be a retail job where I was going to be exposed to people that I didn't know strangers and I'd have to initiate conversations and things like that so when I got that job I was super scared and I, I remember my first day on the job i didn't know what to do i didn't know how to say hi can i help you like i was so scared it's so funny thinking back on it right now because i literally had zero people skills i had no i did not know how to talk to strangers i didn't know what to do i was so scared i was like a mouse hiding hiding in the store i remember my manager would be like you can go up and talk to them and i'm like okay And I remember just watching the other associates and just copying them, just doing what they did. And through that job, I learned people skills. I learned how to talk to people. I learned how to hold conversations. I learned how to initiate conversations with people. So that has been that that job gave me really uh, important experience that I took with me throughout the rest of my life. And now I'm at this point now in my life where it's like you can leave me in a room full of people that I don't know and I can be okay you know what I mean you can bring me to an event or social and I'll be fine you know what I mean like it trust me that is really important to learn so I'm glad that I purposely put myself in a position where I knew that I was going to grow and that it was I was just going to be like thrown out there and forced to learn how to talk to people because I knew that's that I knew that's how I was going to grow so getting out of your comfort zone intentionally will have its benefits it's the only way to grow number 21 make time for yourself so i mean i guess that's related to developing or identifying your self-care routine but making time for yourself means you know if you want to work out you make time to work out everyone has time to work out period there's 24 hours in a day what are you doing for all those hours if you can block out even 10 minutes and say that you're going to dedicate that time to yourself to work out that's making time for yourself congrats pat yourself on the back because that's a big deal and for me when i when i think about meditating i don't always make time for it but i always can right and i think you should celebrate the time that you do make for yourself when you commit to yourself so making time for yourself to do whatever you need to do to put yourself forward or to do something that's good for you is a really important and and important life lesson that I've learned um yeah (laughs) number 22 re-strategize reorganize and replan as many times as you need to this is a big one because in life I feel like it's almost looked at as like a failure if you are to start something and then backtrack and then start something else and then backtrack it's like it's a one-way ticket you can only as soon as you launch it, have to continue moving forward. No, actually life isn't perfect like that. And there's been so many projects and things that I've decided to do where I've had to just kind of like backtrack and be like, wait, I don't like this. I need to figure it all out, especially with all my content online. Like I put it out. I think it's one thing. And then no, I have to re-strategize. I have to reorganize. I have to figure it out because sometimes that's not what I want to put out at the end of the day anymore. So I've learned the art of re-strategizing, reorganizing, and replanning because that's just how it works. I have to sometimes take five steps back, five steps back, even when I think that I'm moving forward. But I don't honestly look at it as I'm going backward. I'm still always going forward. I'm just kind of recalibrating and making sense of things. And that's fair and that's fine to do in this life. Number 23, no one really knows what they're doing, okay? Everyone is figuring things out. If there's anything I learned in my last job, there were a lot of smart people there, a lot of smart people there, and they were like 25, 26, using big words and everything. (laughs) And I used to be like, oh my God, they're so smart, they're so smart. 
listen, they didn't know anything. I'm okay. They knew what they were talking about to an extent, but they really played up. They really played up how confident they sounded because I feel like at the end of the day, no one, not even the CEO really knew what he was talking about, but they, you, they could fool you to make you believe that they knew what they were talking about. And that's all that matters. So just know that, you know, when you look at some of these professionals out here on, on Instagram and everything like that, that they're trying to figure it out themselves. They're still working it out. They don't have all the answers. They are just doing and they're learning on the go. They're making mistakes and they're learning on the go. Everyone's just trying to figure it out. So don't feel like you have to be perfect in everything. You just don't. Just work at it. Do your best and keep it moving. Number 24, you have all the answers you need. Sometimes this is hard for me because... I'm always looking for signs outwardly, like, what is it? What is it? What's my calling? What's my purpose? All the answers are inside me. I used to go to um, therapy. I had a psychoanalyst, shout out Ling Ling, and I used to be like, I used to ask her questions and she just would be like, I don't know, you know. And I'd be like, I don't know. What do you mean? You know. And she'd be like, no, you know, the answer is in you. And it would just frustrate me so much because I'd be like, what is she talking about? But in hindsight, looking back on those experiences, I do know, right? You just have to look inwards. And whether that means meditating, exploring new avenues, doing other things, like the answer always comes to you sooner or later. There's really nothing anyone else can tell you about yourself that you don't already know. And I'm saying that from like a spiritual sense or a spiritual perspective. That won't make sense if you're thinking about it logically. It just makes sense spiritually. So <laughs> tap in, meditate, figure yourself out. But you have, you hold all the answers to all the questions that you're asking. Number 25, people are seasonal. Situations are seasonal. Jobs are seasonal. Everything is temporary. Okay, that's why we have four seasons in the calendar year. Everything's temporary. You know, the flowers are temporary. The bees come and go. The birds fly south for the winter. Everything's so temporary. And you can look at that as like actually a great thing, a blessing. I think about it in terms of people. It's a little harder because it's like, oh, you think some people are permanent in your life. Everyone's going to die, to be honest. Sorry to break it to you. So that alone tells you that people are temporary. But even if it comes in form of relationships, friendships, temporary, all temporary. Sometimes I wonder why I meet certain people because they seemed really great and then they left abruptly. Or sometimes it's just like an acquaintance and it's like, why did I, why did I cross paths with that person? And it's because, you know, maybe they were just meant to give me a compliment or answer a question or I had some sort of insight to give them. But everything is temporary. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy all moments, even the uncomfortable ones because everything is temporary. Number 26, something that I've been doing a lot this year, spend more time in nature. I felt more connected to nature than I ever have. Actually, that's a lie. Last year, I went to Hawaii, my favorite vacation so far. And I remember going there and feeling like life in Toronto was on pause. And when I was out there, I was really, really living. It was like two alternate realities. And I just remember being surrounded by the water and the trees and the birds and the fresh fruit. And it just gave me so much life and an energy that I can't even explain. But being out there was so restorative to me, so healing to me. And, you know, I mean, I came back into the city, into the grind, into the, you know, concrete jungle. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I was like, I miss nature. And so this year, you know, with everything being closed, I started to discover hiking and, you know, just these nice trails around me and biking and just being in nature again and realizing how, again, restorative it is. I remember once I had a headache and I took a walk through the park and amongst the forest and everything, the trees. And honestly, I felt so good. I felt good. My headache left and I was like, wow, thank you, nature. Like, this is great. Number 27 manifestation is real okay law of attraction is realer <laughs> dream it then real life it if there's anything that i've learned in the past three years is that i create my reality by my thoughts the things i think i think my thought my life right now is a is comprised of the thoughts that i've, I've carried throughout my life a belief is a thought that you think about constantly our minds are our blessing 
or it could be your enemy, your worst enemy. You have to know how to use it properly. You have to know how to use it to your advantage. Because if you let anything overcome you in your mind, you're done for. Not even, like, it just it makes no sense. So if you already defeat yourself mentally, you're done. So anyways, manifestation is real. Number 28, life is full of habits. What you do every day is a habit. Do you think our brains have time to think about every little thing we do? It really doesn't. And I took this out of Atomic Habits, that book. When you think about it, we're all just a bunch of habits operating working in this world because we literally cannot think of everything like when i when i go in the car i know how to drive already i'm not even thinking about it we're on habits we run off of habits when you understand this you can take control of that you can change your habits you can also like take out things that maybe you do that are hindering your progress and growth but i think it's really important to realize that you know we're full of habits and understanding that i can change my habit loop it doesn't have to, I don't have to be like a victim of, you know, what I do every day. But anyways, number 29, learn every day, remain a student. I don't know it all. I don't want to know it all. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly growing. I'm constantly improving and practicing and getting better at things. I don't know it all. I'm learning so many new things. I mean, if anything, like recently I've started to learn about my power being a black woman, my melanin learning about life being open and just learning in general has changed my life for the best i don't i remember saying like after university i was like yep i'm done with that institution never going back honestly it's like true i'm i'm not going to go back but i've never stopped learning a day since it's just different type of learning and then there has to be some learning that you want to learn about you know what i mean you have to kind of put yourself out there and continue learning and continue growing listen keep using that muscle which is your brain to get you forward and lastly my last lesson is celebrate the small wins life is about perspective fail forward don't stay low too long be grateful and appreciative of what you've accomplished and experienced and learn to look at the bright side of things and i know that i don't mean to never ruminate on what didn't happen or what went bad experience that allow yourself that much but then learn how to move forward and go ahead afterwards so that was my list of 30 life lessons at 30 a lot of these were learned throughout my 20s of course and i just feel so wise (laughs) going through my list and and you know giving you a breakdown of all of these things that i've experienced and i can't wait until not even the next 10 years, but even within this year, how many more lessons I'm going to learn on top of that. I think um, turning 30 to me feels like any other day. I don't feel any different. If anything, I feel like right now I have better direction in my life and more intention. I know how to go about doing it, um, but I'm still learning along the way and I'm still growing every day. So I'm, I'm not being too hard on myself because I'm not at a certain place in my life where I think I should be using quotes right now where I think I should be I don't know I feel like I'm in a good spot right now I'm in a good place right now um I'm grateful for the life I've lived up so far and I'm grateful for you for listening this way through I hope you learned and can take some of the life lessons that I've experienced and apply them to your life and grow and excel in your life but yeah I want to thank you guys for listening and until next time guys 